Welcome to my video where there's no meta slaving, no top of the line artifact sets, no golden ratios of stats, no tailored 5 star weapons, and no crack supports, character spotlight, the bog standard, run of the mill, just playing, not sweating, casual player's point of view of how Genshin Impact looks like. Now this video is going to show you how an actual broke as an Archon, casual as a jean skin, bland as Ayaka's life, Standard as Kitching's banner, default player would look like. Welcome to Genshin Impact's Filthy Casual Spotlight, featuring Raiden Shogun. Right off the bat, my Raiden is at level 90. Now this took me a good month's worth of pre-farming without refreshes to get everything I needed, which are a good 400 or more Hero's Wits, 5 million Mora, and the talent books and weapon ascensions needed to make her relatively decent. She's armed with a respectably ironic two-pronged trident, it's actually a carving fork, at R5 which took me a good week and a half of casual fishing, but I did go to Fort Co-op Worlds and got lucky with the ever so rare green chompers to max refine the fort. Moving on to her overall stats, I have a solid 40 crit rate and 137 crit damage. Since I'm only using her as a burst DPS, the cash will give her the 12% extra crit rate whenever she uses her ultimate. This is not a good setup for you sweats out there, but for a simple person like me and to you others, it can do its job. One thing I do have going and would recommend to you guys is maxing out her energy recharge to at least 270 and most to 300 because with 270 or more energy recharge, her burst refills almost instantly the moment you finish her animation, especially when you proc elemental reactions. That way she can and recast your burst if need be to make up for her lack of damage and refill your team's ultimate bars. Now I've only leveled up her talents to the minimum 4, 6, 8 and if I were to be even more frugal, 1, 6, 8. Because for filthy casuals like myself, I only need her for her ultimate. The artifact set that I'm using is a 4 piece severed fate with an energy recharge sands and an attack goblet as well as a crit rate helm. Moving on to her ultimates and her damage. The runs I did only have me eating crit pancakes for more consistent testing. Moving on to our damage per thumbnail, the best I could do is 52k with overload reaction only and no damage buffs. Again, the food symbol here is me eating for more crit rate. With C2 Bennett at talent level 6, because that's all you can get before you can grind trance bosses for your supports, here's what you're gonna see. A respectable 72.9k damage. I won't show you whale supports, but I can show you this run with Raiden and C5 Sucrose with 4 Viridescent and Thrilling Tails as her weapon, C2 Bennett with 4 Peace Noblesse, and C2 Sara with 2 Noblesse and 2 Severed Fate. All of their talents here at level 6, except for Sucrose, but her level 9 talents won't affect the elemental buff of the 4 Piece Viridescent. And the damage that you get is a big 135.7 thousand damage. This is all electro damage and we're not even counting in her basic attack. Now in this team comp, Raiden is the sole DPS of her team and the sole support as well. Her damage is okay at best but I'm happy that she can do near 100k damage with Sucrose alone. Now if you're the rare Pokemon that likes Electro, then ideally you should run Raiden, Sara, Sucrose, and then any burst support for elemental reactions. Or if you really want a mono electro team, you can put Beidou in there but I doubt they will work with each other. Now for the sake of mono electro teams, she deals exactly 100,000 damage. Honestly that's the minimum threshold I guess for her big damage. And you can run Mona in replacement of Sara but I don't run one hit comps because my Mona is level 20 and I don't have any more more to spare. But if you're running Raiden as a burst DPS, which is what she should be along with other burst DPS, then here's what it's gonna look like. Shang Ling with Sing Cho and Raiden with Sucrose or Bennett as a burst team. Keep in mind that the catch is interchangeable with Favonius Lance if you prefer Raiden's burst or Shang Ling's. I personally have Shang Ling at C6 with R3 Dragon's Bane and Sing Cho at C6 with R5 Sacrificial Sword because I wasted all my Freemo gems on Hu Tao's banner way back in patch 1.3. Now this is where I'm gonna talk about her 300 energy recharge. I'd say the 300 energy recharge is the upper limit to any Raiden build. As long as you're using any energy recharge weapon, be it the cheap Star Glitter or the Broken Sod Trimmer. So what do you get with 300 ER? For one, she instantly refreshes her ultimate when she takes her first normal attack cycle. 
so no problems with recharging her own ultimate. Furthermore, with 300 energy recharge, she restores her favorite teammates ultimates even if they have 80 cost to near full charge. Shangling, Xing Chou, and Sucrose's ultimate are already to near full and would only require a bit more orbs to complete the cycle. I'm running all three of them with attack sands and rely on whatever energy recharge substats they have, with the hardest to build up being Shang Ling. But a healthy 130 ER on Shang Ling will be more than enough for everyone else in the team to fill her bar for her. The first test is going to be with Shang Ling on Favonius Lands with Sucrose and Bennett, so Raiden can be the star of the show. The second test is with Shang Ling running Dragon's Bane and Xing Cho and Bennett as well as Raiden running the catch for a national team composition. This is the best setup for Raiden and my favorite out of the three. Since her whole kit benefits everyone and vice versa and your overall team synergy and damage potential can be applied nearly anywhere. You can swap Bennett with Sara or Sucrose depending on who you want more as well as swapping Shang Ling and Raiden with either Favonius Lance, Dragon's Bane or the Catch depending on who you want to deal more damage. And honestly there isn't much difference between switching those weapons especially for casual playing but if you get lucky and get the Skyward Spine it's going to be a good weapon and giving Shang Ling the R5 Catch. To sum it up, Raiden is made to be a damage spike battery for your team, a burst DPS support unit that can do a bit more in terms of damage. She's a good first 5 star for you AR20s out there because Shang Ling is ironically her best friend. Not to mention a very casual friendly character too, since if you just play Genshin for relatively chill sessions and not max 36 starring everything in the abyss, you'll do well and have a lot of fun at the same time, just pressing Q and left clicking for the entire time you're playing. The all-encompassing god of teams, composed of 4 stars, the national team with Raiden, is going to quite literally hit your enemies like lightning, especially now that the energy recharge ley line is about to be gone. She's also a good battery for whoever you want to keep using ultimates on over time, either Yula, Diluc, or Ayaka, or maybe even Xiao, if you're of course a filthy casual, because to me these DPS units need a battery, and Raiden steps into that hole really well, providing her own damage like Zhongli but with more energy recharge. If you got lucky and built her well as well as getting her weapon, she can be a really good sub DPS or even a main DPS along with your other main DPS when they're off field and waiting for cooldown. She functions really well as a burst DPS with more damage whenever she uses her burst, comparable to Venti as an Archon but with her damage coming from both her initial burst and the burst attacks. Her off-field damage is slightly above official in that you won't need C6 or stay within an area because Raiden's elemental skill follows wherever you go and exceeds Fischl's overall utility value from the energy recharge that you get from her burst. Now the biggest hurdle you need to overcome as a casual is getting her mats like maxing out your runescape character to 100 fishing. Her mats will be locked for anyone who isn't around AR30 and you'll need to do some hello puzzle solving the moment you get to Seirai Island. But you won't be needing her at level 90 until you hit AR45 since level 40 Raiden or level 60 at best is more than enough for you to get through story quests at AR20. If you're looking for the best and most meta unit in the game then I'm surprised that you got this far watching my video because the most broken character right now is Ganyu and Mihoyo don't get any plans to power creep her anytime soon. She does have synergy problems with her fellow Electro Burst DPS that should have been her best pair which is Beido which is sad because a team around those two would have been pretty good especially if you're running a mono electro pump with Sara and Sucrose as a support. Her role as a battery is easily taken down when your team is built and ready with the proper amount of energy needed without any help. I mean, as long as you clear Abyss with 36 stars then that won't be a problem because that's the only end game we have right now. She also has inconsistencies with overload damage and that the lighter enemies fly away when overloaded. And given that the recent Nobushi nerf would have been fine but people kept yammering on about Nobushi being too heavy and Venti can't pull them enough so yeah we have that now. And finally my biggest gripe with Raiden is that she cannot cook anything for her life. If Gordon Ramsay himself told her to cook she just wouldn't function. Now obviously if you have Kazuha or Sucrose at C6 it'd be better but this video isn't for sweats so here's the best you're getting. Now accept the fact that this is the most casual, um, not even casual, <laughs> the most filthy casual damage that, that a filthy casual could do. And there it is, the Genshin Impact Filthy Casuals Guide for Raiden Shogun. I feel like making more of these satire videos once in a while depending on 
my <laughs> my characters and my teams. And so I want to show you guys my characters and the way I built them. But I can't compete with the whales and the free-to-play masters out there. <laughs> no, honestly, I just want to show my characters in a different light compared to others. So comment below on what you guys think. And let me end this video by saying do what you want in Genshin Impact. Because you'll eventually go to 6 star abyss anyway. And the abyss is constantly changing so you'll have to make do with what you have. Or until you max out your supports which is the only <laughs> the only characters that you need to max out in this game because it's basically support impact and as a pve gotcha game this doesn't really need uh this doesn't really need you to show or follow a cemented road to ensure that you <laughs> win in the game because well we're all collecting waifus aren't we now there is however some guidelines to play in the game correctly but there was never a set in stone rule that you guys should follow <clears throat> So play the game just like you're relaxing and, you know, be casual. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.